welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Adam Pluto SDR. Now, first off, I would just like to say a massive thank you to Analog Devices for sending me this sample so that I can make this series of videos on this and hopefully enlighten your knowledge about the Adam Pluto SDR. So in the box, we get a USB cable, short SMA to SMA patch cable, we get the Pluto itself, and we also get two short stubby antennas. Now I'll talk more about these antennas later in the video. The Pluto has two USB sockets, one for a direct USB connection and another USB connection for power. You can, however, power the Pluto from the standard USB socket, but if you want to use a peripheral such as a network adapter, then you'll need to power the Pluto using the dedicated power port. Now, as just mentioned, the Pluto can be connected using an ethernet adapter. This means you can connect the Pluto to your existing local area network. Work. This feature is one of the best features that's available because there are many times where I personally needed to mount an SDR receiver far, far away from my computer and a USB extension cable would just not work. I'll create a separate video on how to use and configure the Ethernet adapter to work with the Pluto. There are some configuration changes that will need to be made. So first off, the Pluto SDR is a software defined radio, which is capable of receiving and transmitting from 325 megahertz all the way up to 3.8 gigahertz with a maximum bandwidth of 20 megahertz. Now this is the standard frequency range that the Pluto ships with. However, there is a simple process that you can follow, which will expand the frequency range from 70 megahertz all the way up to six gig. And you also get a bandwidth of up to 56 megahertz. Now 56 megahertz bandwidth is huge. And if you don't know what I mean by bandwidth, it means the Pluto can listen to 50 megahertz of spectrum at the same time. It's like listening to the whole of the FM broadcast band at the same time with air band chucked in for good measure. Now, again, I'll make a separate video on how you modify it as that is slightly outside the scope of this particular video. Now, the Pluto SDR can support full duplex, which means it can transmit and receive at the same time. This is supported because the Pluto has two SMA female antenna connections. One is for receive and the other is for transmit. It also supports, as standard, a tunable bandwidth from 200 kilohertz up to 200 megahertz without modification. Now the processor used in the Pluto is an ARM Cortex-A9 clocked at 66 megahertz. Now one of the most interesting and useful features is that the Pluto uses a Linux kernel. As we go through my series of videos on the Pluto, I will cover how you can SSH into your Pluto to make modifications and configurations. Now the Pluto also supports custom firmware with a whole host of custom firmwares out there depending on what you want to use it for. Now another good thing is that the Pluto is completely open source, hardware and software, which means anyone can tinker around with the firmware and create custom applications. After all, the Pluto is marketed as an SDR active learning module. Now, without going into too much technical detail, I wanted to show you the block diagram of the Pluto. Now, firstly, at the bottom, we can see the USB 2 interface, which goes through the libio into the Linux kernel, through the drivers and the DMA, and then off to the interface. This block is all self-contained within a Xilinx Zinc device, which has helped keep the Pluto to a small design. The interface then feeds into the AD9363, which is an analog devices own module and this contains two paths we have a receive path and a transmit path now on the left is the transmit path going through its DAC mixer and then filters and then finally out to the PA power amplifier and then on the right we see a similar block but as this is the receive path we have an LNA which is a low noise amplifier at the start of the receive path now let's talk briefly about the RF power output the Pluto is capable of this chart has been taken from the Pluto wiki page and I'll leave a link down in the description if you'd like to read more about this but let's just take a look at this chart and decipher what it means so the vertical scale is measuring power in dBm and the horizontal is showing the frequency. Now, according to this chart, the modulation was LT10 and the key site PXA was used for measuring the power. Now, I didn't find any details about what type of cable we used or whether the Pluto was powered via a standard computer USB port or whether it was powered by a higher amperage power supply. Now, these things would no doubt affect the power readings. So let's look at these figures as a ballpark figure. Now, the horizontal scale is shown between zero and six gigs. So clearly the tester had modified the Pluto with this frequency expansion mod as mentioned earlier. Now, starting from the left, we can see a steep power curve 
peaking at around 10.5 dBm. As we head up the scale to around 2.5 GHz, we see a drop to around 7 dBm. A slight increase as we head past 3 GHz, and then a gradual decline to around 4 dBm as we approach 6 GHz. So as you can see from this chart that the Pluto RF output power will vary depending on what frequency you are transmitting on. Now this is something to bear in mind if you're going to be using the Pluto in some form of transmitter project. Now at the start of the video I showed you two little antennas which come shipped with a Pluto. Now according to the specifications these antennas are good to be used between 824 MHz and 894 MHz. It also then has a top part which is 1.7 gigs up to 2.1 gigs. Now I own a network analyzer which can check the SWR on an antenna between 1 and 900 MHz. So I could definitely check to see the SWR curve on the lower supported frequency range. So I attach one of these antennas onto my VNA and set the sweep from 750 MHz up to 900 megs. And as you can see on the screen this is the result. Now if you're going to use one of these antennas for transmit then I would only use it between 800 MHz and around 840 MHz to keep the SWR lower than around 2.2. You can clearly see that the lowest point of SWR was around 820 MHz. Now I test both these antennas and both had the same results. Now as my VNA cannot go above 900 MHz I was unable to test the 1.7 to 2.1 GHz range although I do have the VNA version 2 on its way to me here in the UK on the slow boat from China. Once that arrives, I'll be able to test these antennas fully. Now, in my opinion, I would recommend that if you're going to use this device for transmit on whatever frequency, then use a dedicated resonant antenna for best performance and to save any damage to the PA of the Pluto. So let's connect the Pluto to my computer via USB and let's test it out. So when you plug the Pluto SDR into your computer, it will present itself as a mash storage device. Now my Windows 10 machine, it will automatically open up the file explorer folder for the Pluto. Now within that folder, you'll see a config.txt file. And if we open it, you'll see some configuration settings that we can adjust. Now in this video, we are just going to look at the network stanza, which is the Pluto's IP address, which is seen by your computer when using USB. You can adjust the IP address and subnet to match your current network settings. Using a ping command in a command window, you can easily test that the computer is seeing the Pluto. I'll cover more about the specifics of this in another video. So once you've made the changes required, simply save the file and then eject the device from the USB bridge. The Pluto will reboot and then the settings will be applied. To confirm the changes and to check the Pluto's SDR status, you can open the info.html file into a web browser, which will be located in the mass storage device route. Now under the getting started section, there'll be two links to the main Pluto SDR drivers and to the lib IO drivers, both of which you will need to install. Now once the drivers are installed and with the Pluto connected, we're now able to perform a couple of tests to ensure that the Pluto is installed correctly. So firstly, we open a command prompt window and we type IIO underscore info dash S. Now this will show us that the Pluto is connected to the computer via USB. We will now need to know the IP address of the Pluto. So we can take that from the config.txt file or from the info.html file. We now type IIO underscore info dash U IP colon and then the IP address and press enter. And you should now see the screen scrolling with a lot of information. You can check this information to make sure that the Pluto is being fully recognized. So now we're confident that the Pluto is installed correctly. We can go ahead and perform a receive test. Now for a receive test, I'm going to use SDR console as this software fully supports the Pluto SDR for receive and transmit. Adding the Pluto to the list of available SDRs in SDR console is just like adding any other device. Simply use the search for definition feature to add the Pluto. Now in this example, I have my Pluto connected to an LMB, which is on a dish at the end of my garden pointing towards Oscar 100. Please note that even though the SDR console is showing a receive frequency of 10 gigs, I'm using an offset so the actual receive frequency is around 739 megahertz. So let's take a listen. Now if I transmit, I'm going to remove the offset and transmit and receive around 2.4 GHz. 
the Pluto is disconnected to small antennas and we're going to use the Pluto in full duplex mode. So what you hear is what the Pluto is receiving from the Pluto's transmit antenna. Let's take a listen to that. Testing, testing, one, two. One, two, three, four, five. This is local test, local test. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mexico Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Testing Pluto, testing Pluto on 2.4 gigs. Currently at 2.7 kilohertz bandwidth. Let's go up to 5 kilohertz. One, two, three. Okay, so we're a little bit wider now. And that's 10. I think the max is there, around there. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing for Tech Mines. Now I haven't tested the Pluto on air as of yet, but I'm hoping to do that real soon. If you've seen some of my other videos, you will know that I have a keen interest in setting up a ground station so that I can work through the geostationary satellite Oscar 100. Now before releasing the Pluto on air, I needed to perform some modifications. The first modification was to replace the TCXO. Without going into too much technical details, the TCXO, which comes with standard on the Pluto, unfortunately is not really suitable for SSB transmissions at 2.4 GHz. This is because it will drift ever so slightly. Now SSB communications need an ultra stable frequency, as any small drift can render your transmission unintelligible. So to fix this, I replaced the standard TCXO with one that has better specification and has already been proven by other users to help the Pluto become usable on SSB at 2.4 GHz. As you can see here is a very small SMD and to replace it I had to use a microscope and a hot air soldering iron station. Another modification is the ground mod. Now this involves running a small piece of wire from the ground pin to a couple of components and the USB port shells. Now this ground mod is to prevent any lockups when using the Pluto via an ethernet adapter and long ethernet cables. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first of many Pluto SDR videos that I have planned. So if you're interested in this, please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell to be notified when I next upload. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of those that have contributed to my GoFundMe campaign where I'm trying to raise funds for a camera to be used on this TechMinds channel. Now I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to know the reasons behind this and if you'd like to contribute. I'd also like to thank my current patrons who regularly support this channel every month and help contribute to the gear shown in my videos. Now until the next video guys, stay safe, stay indoors, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.